and I would be happy to walk with you through it. I'd be happy to give you a candle if that's what you can get started. But to be able to tell each other that we love each other is an incredible, encouraging word. Let's move into our next set of verses, verses 12 through 15. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Fill blank number two. Jesus says to us, this is how much. Jesus says to us, this is how much. To use encouraging words to love happens on several levels. First, Jesus tells us he loves us. He manifests his love by telling us. And that's good. But then he goes deep. And he goes so deep, I can barely handle it. Because he doesn't just tell us he loves us, he tells us how much he loves us. He tells us he loves us so much that he's willing to die for us. Now I need to go, I need to go kind of deep. Is that okay? I want you to just think for a moment, because this was so convicting to me when I read this text. Who would you die for here today? Is there anyone in here that you can say, honestly, I would lay down my life for? That's heavy. That made me step back. How much do I love people? Am I even capable of loving people as much as Jesus loved me? Because that's what he did. Consider very deeply how much you love him. And are you willing to tell him how much? Now that's the ultimate. What Jesus gives us is the ultimate right off the bat. You know, I, I love you enough that I'm willing to lay down my life for you. You're my friend. Who would you die for today? Consider that for a moment or two. But then Jesus also says, I love you so much, I'm going to let you in on my business, on my father's business. I'm going to let you know I love you, and this is how much. I'm going to involve you in what I'm doing. I'm going to tell you how much I love you. And I think that's another way of using encouraging words. I had an individual who took it upon themselves to write me a note on Sunday. And they would say, good sermon. And that was great. That was all they really would have needed to do. But then they put in there, and this is what was great. They told me how much. They said, this is, this is what was helpful. I really appreciate it. I like the way you do this. They expand on it, not just to manifest, but they can also tell me how much. After your love has been manifest, let them know how much. I'm going to move into our last section of verses, verses 16 and 17. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, the fruit that will last. Then my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my commandment. Love each Film like last. Jesus says to us, there is even more. There is even more. There's more love to come. He says it doesn't just end here. It's going to keep going. Encouraging words like this are the ones that we learn early in our lives at the elementary school playground. Because this is the love language of I pick you. I pick you. Remember that? I was always the last one. Didn't matter what game, my athletic abilities exceeded, you know, in, in such deficient ways, people knew I was off. And I remember what it was like to watch kids who were chosen and then appointed. Jimmy, I pick you. You're going to pitch. Kirk, I'm going to pick you. You're on first. Steve, I'm going to pick you. You're on second. And so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Martin, you're a left. Just stand up there. <laughs> That's the way you do it. Because I wasn't chosen or appointed. But Jesus 
chooses us and appoints us into his work. Here is Jesus saying the powerful words. I'm going to get you into our business. And guess what? It's going to last. What you do for me, what you do for the kingdom is going to last. How many people have heard the phrase uttered to you? Well, you know, in the long run, it doesn't really matter anyway. Now, 100 years from now, well, it's not going to matter. Who's going to care? Jesus says just the opposite. I love you so much, and I'm going to give you these encouraging words, that what you do for me is going to last. Kingdom work is encouraging because it lasts. Sunday school teacher, guess what? What you did this morning is going to last. Multimedia person, what you're doing right now is going to last. Usher, what you do around here lasts. It makes a lasting impact. And those are encouraging words in a world of temporary. In a world of, well, that will last. And finally, the biggest encouraging words of all are ones that almost seem impossible. When he says, whatever you ask for in my name, it'll be done. It'll be given. I, there's a whole sermon in there. And I've already preached just about one. But there's a whole other sermon in there. If you want that, tell me. I'll bring it back to you sometime later. Because I need to move into applications. But the theology of that verse is so heavy. It's amazing. But I want to move right into application. After you manifest your love, you use encouraging words to express. Then you use even more encouraging words to tell the person how much you love them. Jesus said he died for us. And that's the ultimate. But now we need to use encouraging words to the mass and tell the person that you love there's even more. Encouraging words like, you know what? I've always liked your lasagna. And I can't wait to be making Encouraging words like, you know, you did a great job leading singing. I can't wait until you lead again. Or thanks for helping me the other day. You've always been there for me. These are encouraging words that say, you've helped me, and it's lasting. It's, it's going to keep going. But then we can also use those heavy words in verse 16 to give an eternal nature to the love that we have through encouraging words. To say things like, you know, let me know if there's anything I can do. Or perhaps, you know, you can call me 24-7 because I'm going to be here for you. Encouraging words can let others know there's more love to come. Now, a final application that is, that is right there. Uh, a while back, some of you were here when Brother Dave Swamper will be coming up and meeting our congregational prayer time. His wife came through cancer, or should I say is still coming through the process of cancer. One of the things that really helped her were notes and cards that people wrote. And so Dave got it in his head that he's going to make them available. Little notes that we can drop to each other, giving encouraging words. There's little holders out by the secretary's office on the side of the boxes that you can write on right there. Encouraging words that you can pass on. Is there someone that needs encouragement today that you know of? Would you be willing to manifest your love and tell them? Would you be willing to tell them how much? And they even tell them that there's more. There's more love. It's my prayer today that you will use the love language of encouraging words in the coming years. And for the people who have that as their primary love language, you're going to love them so good. And for the people who maybe don't, it's still going to make them feel wonderful. Let's pray.